Hello, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of Bentley Water Gems. Uh, it's our uh, Bentley's water distribution and modeling software. Uh, so let's look at the agenda of this uh, video. So I'll give you the basic overview of water gems, what you what you require, um, and what are the uh, hydraulic elements present in it. Then I'll go over the interface, draw a simple model, um, run through a simple analysis, and what are the output or results that you get out of Bentley water gems. So um, let's look at uh, typical modeling in water gems what data you require and what do you get as output. So you have a network here, which has um, a reservoir and a tank, uh, and then you need to actually enter the water available uh, or the head. Then for the pipes, you need to enter your length, your C factor and your diameter. And for your junction nodes, you need to enter your elevations and demands. And then if there are pumps and valves present, you need to enter that. So these are the minimum data that is required to do a simple model. And what do you get as output? After you run the model, pressures, velocities, the HGL head losses, these are the sum of the typical output that you get out of a water gems model after you run the analysis. Now let's look at some of the hydraulic element types. Um, the typical ones are the pipe, junctions, tanks, reservoirs, as well as other uh, hydraulic elements such as pumps, variable speed pump batteries, different types of valves like pressure redu reducing valves, pressure sustaining valves, flow control valves, general purpose valves, etc. Now let's open the water gems interface. We can set up our new project. Um, and look at the drawing scale and um, you can set up your drawing scale the units uh, in for example if one within metric or in uh, imperial units we can do that you can also bring in your background layers uh, different formats are specified uh, shape files jpegs images uh, dxfs here i'm bringing a dxf file uh, setting up uh, uh, colors and other uh, information. Um, once you bring your DXF file, you can start laying out your network. I'm starting with a reservoir and I'm basically drawing other uh, information, such as pipes, junctions. Um, and if there are bends in your system, you can also physically represent those bends. Uh, and then uh, complete your network uh, for the entire uh, uh, area. So once you, you do that, you should be able to add other information uh, as we discussed earlier. So the complete network is uh, done. Now we can uh, input, uh, say, junction elevation data um that's been entered next thing we can enter is uh, pipe data now the water elevation is 234 meters at the reservoir so the pipe data is also entered with diameter c factors material um, the scale length is automatic um, then we need to enter demands um, example if you open the demand control center the demands have been entered now if you have don't like your units you say for example it's in gpm you can instantly change units and make it in a more um, 
proper unit which you would like say in liters per day example then you're ready to compute the model so I'm just going to compute the model it's over a period of time and once the model is run you should be able to look at the results uh, for example pressure red at this junction it can also play it over time so it, the values changes as you play along over the 24 hour period or 12 hour period which you run now once you do that uh, the next thing you could do is basically change scenario so I did it did it for a 2020 average demand now I'm going to do for peak demand and recompute the model you would see that there might be some issues uh, there are some alerts and warning pressures are a little bit down um, at some point of time so initially it's fine uh, 30.6 meters but as you look at the uh, time browser so the pressure keeps on coming down and it's uh, you know at 7 o'clock 8 o'clock in the morning the pressures are really low because of high demands so you can do a few things you can actually improve your system um, and you can also s set up your color coding for better interpretation of th the data so right now I'm going to change my uh, scenario so that the basically change diameters and reflect the improved system so I'm going to change it to say 2020 peak improved so the diameters are now 150 mm at the ends so now let's recompute the uh, data and see how it looks like now even at um, 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. when the demands are high the pressure values are still uh, much higher than the requirement unlike in the previous case so the other thing you could also do you can set up a contour map of your uh, system uh, so it's based on pressure you could set up with other values as well then you need to also uh, set up some profiles if you'd like say you want to see a HGL profile along with your ground levels that's also possible so I'm selecting from the reservoir up to a particular junction and you can see your uh, profiles um, so ground level with the HGL um, next thing you can do is to uh, open a tabular format form of your results so you have your pressure heads then you can generate reports um, and you can put it in various formats such as Excel PDFs etc so this concludes our basic water gems overview um, thank you for watching